All right, so today's big idea is that we're going to be looking at the professional social network LinkedIn. Previously, we looked at Twitter and we looked at Facebook. Uh, and we were using those two for marketing, you know, marketing our company, marketing our product, etc. But we've also got LinkedIn as a growing social network. I don't remember what the latest statistics are for the number of users, but it's hundreds of millions of users. And this one focuses more as the professional social network. So this is where you put your resume, this is where you put your accomplishments, this is where you put uh, maybe that you're looking for a job or your skills and all of that and network with people. Uh, people that you meet in the real world or people that you meet virtually. Uh, and I know I've used this for years to connect with people that are that are professionals that need, that have some need that I have to have fulfilled like uh, connecting with maybe a, a realtor when I was looking for that or other web design people. So as a preview I'm going to show you here my profile and I have to give you a caveat. I do um, I, I am available for connections but not during the semester. It would be a conflict of interest for us to connect on LinkedIn while you're in my class because okay we're great friends on, on on social networks but I don't want that to affect the grade that you get so after the semester ends I might accept uh, connection requests and so forth so I don't accept them during the semester while you're in my class so if you want to take a look at my profile here notice uh, if you've got this set up you can have your own vanity address your own LinkedIn address that you can claim and just like any other social network, there might be another person or another company that has the same name that you do. So if you're trying to set up a LinkedIn profile as yourself, hopefully it hasn't been taken because this network has been around several years, at least since 2009, probably older. And um, hopefully your name isn't taken. But notice the address is set up like this, linkedin.com slash in slash and then a name. I did manage to get my name like this on this network. And then so you've probably seen a LinkedIn profile before. You've got various aspects of the person in question. So um, job title, area, experience, education, and so forth, summary. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to create a profile. If you don't have a profile, uh, you'll learn a lot if you've already got a profile. Hopefully you learn an, uh, a new thing or two because we're going to look at various aspects of LinkedIn. And again, the whole point of getting a LinkedIn profile is up to you, but I would be recommending because a lot of you are taking our classes to learn something, to get a certificate or to get a job or, or something, it would be very beneficial for you to have a professional social network, which is LinkedIn. You might have Facebook, you might have Twitter, but really these this is the network that uh, the professionals use. Um, so what do we have here? There's experience. So there's a job history here. If you're trying to get a job as a web designer or um, as a life coach or something, people will be more apt to pay attention to you or to hire you if you can show your experience. You can show your credentials. LinkedIn lets you do that. So notice here I've got these various companies that I've been involved with. So PMD Interactive since November 2006, uh, Adjunct Instructor it's for San Diego Community College since 2008, Adjunct Instructor at Southwestern College since 2007, uh, Web Designer at VMC Inc. since 2001, and, and so forth. So uh, other jobs that I had there for Southwestern College. Nowadays you can set it up also for projects because let's say Maybe you've only got one credential, web designer, and you're your own company. That's fine, because we've got a spot here for projects. What are all the projects you worked on as your own company? So we'll see how to do that. So here's, this needs to be updated, as always. But uh, here's some projects that I've been involved in, what I, what I did with them, who I worked with, and so forth. So again, a lot of this is going to be familiar if you've used Facebook or Twitter, but this is more geared toward professionalism, maybe getting a job, and so forth. Question? 
So it's for the person, not for the company? It can be for both. It can be for the person or the company, but we're going to focus on it at the moment as the person because uh, you might have a company, but you're still an important aspect of the company. And let's say you're trying to get a new job as a web designer. People are going to look up your company. They're also going to look up you, your name. So if they look up, you know, if they do a, a search, Victor Campos, hopefully what appears are results that are relevant and that are you. So here, if someone looks up Victor Campos, they're going to see the actor. That's not me. I was not born in 1935. But if you go to the second link, that's my LinkedIn right there. So someone might be wanting to hire you for your company, but they're probably going to look up your name too. And if the only stuff about you online is those pictures from when you went to Las Vegas, that might not be the best thing to show people. So LinkedIn, uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So uh, there's going to be a section that we'll look at about skills. Uh, you can add this or your connections can add this. And that's a little better that your connections add this, that they endorse you, that they say this person is good at this. And people kind of vote on it and give you more skill points. And so this shows up right here. These are some of the things that I have skills in. Languages, education. So there'll be a section there to see where you've got your education and your training. Uh, it really is unfortunately geared a little bit more toward legitimate educational institutes as in if you learned a lot on your own on YouTube or books or tutorials and you're really knowledgeable that's great but it doesn't exactly seem that you can really claim that that easily on LinkedIn they really want you to put in what college did you go to or high school or whatever interest is for fun to give the human side of things the human side of you honors and awards if you've gotten any and, and so forth. So LinkedIn is not a popularity contest like it would be for Facebook or for Twitter where you might be connected to a hundred or five hundred or a thousand people on Facebook or you want you know seven hundred followers on Twitter or whatever it's not really about the numbers on LinkedIn. Uh, so here I've got 80 connections uh, on Twitter, I've got like 560 followers, and then on Facebook, I've got whatever, and then on Google+, Plus, I've got a thousand and all of that, but I'm not going to perhaps have a lot of connections on LinkedIn just to have connections. I'm not going to accept anyone or everyone that wants to connect with me, because I really believe that you want to use LinkedIn, think about using LinkedIn and ask yourself, uh, you know, what's in it for me? in a selfish way yes what's in it for me connecting someone wants to connect with me what's in it for me what will I gain with their connection is that person knowledgeable in something that I don't have do they have a skill in something that might be useful to me and I think it's totally legitimate to think in that way what's in it for me people connecting with me I get the notification on the all the time on the corner so and so sent you another friend request or, or a LinkedIn connection request most of the time I, I, I ignore them because I really I'm not going to be connecting with people that I don't know number one and I'm not going to be connecting with people that don't have much to offer me um, what how do I benefit from what they offer so yeah that's what I would say it doesn't technically it doesn't have to be but I recommend that it is it should be mutually beneficial for you to connect because if someone connects with me and it looks really good for them, like, oh, they're connected with this college instructor that's very knowledgeable. This person must be really good. I'll connect with them. But then if someone connects with me that, you know, they're just barely out of high school. They don't have much experience. For me, that's not too much of a benefit. You know, I'm not taking on, uh, you know, mentees. I'm not mentoring anyone. So that connection doesn't really benefit me. So it should be beneficial to both of you if you do connect. It doesn't hurt to try to connect with people. Like uh, there's various textbooks that I have in s some of my classes, and I uh, tried to connect with some of the authors, and a few accepted, and a couple didn't, and that's fine. I don't take it bad if someone doesn't want to connect with me. 
that I initiate the connection. But I'm just saying for me and my philosophy is it has to be beneficial to both of us, mostly to me. And I know that sounds selfish, that's okay. LinkedIn is really about what can it benefit you, not uh, friends and uh, chat and all of that. Um, one way to see how it's beneficial is, okay, I, if you're connected with me, you'll be able to see my connections. So you'll see who I'm connected with, and then maybe you can connect with those people. Maybe you're looking for financial advice, maybe you're looking for a job, an internship, or whatever. So my 80 connections might benefit you, but I'm not going to, you know, unleash those unless we're connected. And as I said, I kind of have a high bar for people to connect with me. But you can kind of glean a little bit of this here. If you look at my profile and you look over here, people also viewed here. So some of these people I am connected with, and that way you can kind of go around and see, well, I want to connect with Professor Kathleen Lopez. Yes? Could potential employers kind of like profile you? They could, by and they at, do. By looking at the connections and stuff. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's what's um, nowadays in the modern job market. That it used to be you give a resume to a company and that's, that's your best foot forward and that's everything about you. To find out more about you outside of your resume was a little harder a few years ago. Now because we live so much online, uh, on purpose or on accident, any employer that gets your resume is going to look at your resume and then start researching you. Now, is that ethical? Is that legit legitimate? We're in, a, in an era where that's not really decided yet. I might think like, well, I only want people to know about me what I gave them when I'm being hired. But there's no laws, really, I, I don't think. There's no statutes. It's really out in the open at the moment. Will a company research you? Because it's so much in the open, the companies at the moment pretty much do. So even if you're trying to apply for a college, a scholarship, a job, so that's why it behooves you to have your best foot forward, like on a LinkedIn profile. All right, uh, so just to get a show of hands to see how we will do today, how many of you uh, have heard of LinkedIn before today? Okay, most people. How many of you currently have a profile? Right, two. Two, okay. Okay. I was going to say one for you and one for your evil twin, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. So some of you do, some of you don't. So if you do have it, how many of you would say, not exactly like this, but how many of you would say it's kind of complete, kind of like this? It's got your education and it's got your experience and so forth. A couple of you. Okay, good. So we'll be a little bit half and half. And hopefully the those of you that already have some of this filled out, you'll you'll see some new things. So those of you that do have this filled out, how many of you logged into it within the last week? Okay. How many of you logged into it within the last month? Within the last six months? The last year? Okay. So it is kind of like other social networks in a sense that you use it, you get better at it. Uh, so if you have created it but you haven't really used it recently, you should log into it because they're adding new stuff all the time. Uh, like this projects wasn't always around. This was added relatively new, maybe a year ago. Other new features. What else did I see? There was one here about educational goals. So, question. And the, pro the project section would be like contract work and stuff like that? Yeah, really, it's pretty open-ended. It doesn't have to be contracts. It doesn't have to be official. It could be something that you did for friends and family, friends or family, for free. That's fine. You can write whatever you want because notice here, so here's some projects for El Charco. Web design and development, logo and branding design, graphic design and social media management. Doesn't say anything about being paid, being an intern. It's got the, the date, the you know, how long the project lasted and so forth, if, if you can put that in. Notice this one didn't have it, uh, simply because I forgot when we started the project, uh, so I need to put that in. And most of these have been ongoing. Some of them have ended. You could highlight the skills that you learned somewhere, you know, like not through official uh, academia. You could kind of highlight it there, no? You could 
to describe the project and they describe what you use to complete it. Like you could that example. you could do that as well. You know, if you made an app, that's your project right there. You made an app. What was it about? It was like my dog walking business and you know, I used HTML or whatever. Yeah, that's pretty open. Uh, so we can talk about projects too. So what I'm going to do for a moment, I'm going to do this as if I was brand new to, to LinkedIn. I'm going to create a brand new profile. Uh, and then uh, some of you that already have the profile, well, we'll catch up with you in a moment. If you don't have a profile, we're going to create one right now. So at the top right, well, before that, so any, any questions, any other questions on LinkedIn or my profile or whatever? If you're writing okay. in two countries, is it preferred to just have one profile? Hmm, that's a good question, and I'm not exactly sure the answer. Uh, I would kind of lean toward having two profiles because you might be doing something professionally in one language and doing something else in another. So you have to decide yourself which of these really fits for you. So I sort of feel maybe have two, now you'll have two things to manage, but um, it wouldn't hurt. And it wouldn't be bad if you just had one, because there is a spot here, for example, like languages, you write your, your language proficiencies, and you can fill this in in English or Spanish, doesn't matter, and you can fill both. So over on LinkedIn.com, I'm going to click on the Join Today button. If you've already got one, that's fine. You can log in and we'll catch up. But I'm going to go through this as if I were new. So I click that Join, and now it asks first name, last name, email, and a password. You can log in with Facebook if you'd like. You can set this up via Facebook. That's fine. Uh, it gives you a little shortcut from this screen, but then at another screen it asks you to confirm your Facebook and so forth. So I'm going to set it up the traditional way, uh, putting in uh, email and so forth. So it'll ask you, creating your profile. You want to fill in as much as you can, especially something that is a requirement. So zip code. You should put your real zip code. Or if you want to put the school zip code, it's 91910. Check if you're employed, job seeker, or student. There's no wrong answer. Uh, but let's say if I selected student, you can write what school or university you've attended or are currently attending. If you're a job seeker, what's your most recent job or company if you're self-employed? And if you're employed, are you self-employed in your company? So again, I'm showing you this because I'm creating a brand new account. If you don't see this, I'll show you elsewhere when, you, when I get to it where to edit that. So I'm going to set this as job seeker. Let's say my most recent job title was web designer, and I was self-employed. There's a variety of industries. I think it's a little overwhelming, but you should f be able to find your particular industry. If you're doing web design, I think one of the wants to choose is internet unless you see a different category there oh cool yeah. time period that was my most recent job so I'm gonna say well I just started last year so last year to present create my profile. So it will send you an email to confirm <coughs> Oh, this screen actually is saying it would like permission to connect with your email address so that if you have any uh, 
any contacts on that email address, it will connect you with LinkedIn. Now, I'm going to skip this, but this might be useful to you. But again, think about it. I'm not going to accept every connection that asks for one, even friends and family, because I have to decide how is it beneficial to me. And I don't want to hurt my friend's feelings, but I'm not going to accept her if her only job experience is waitress at Dairy Queen. You know, not to put Dairy Queen down uh, or waitressing. But I'm just uh, saying what's in it for me again. So I'm going to skip the step if it asks you to connect with your with your um, address book. You can do it if you want, no problem. I'm going to skip it. It wants to confirm my email address. All right, so I confirmed my email address. That took me back to LinkedIn. It's suggesting a few people to add as connections. I don't seem to know any of them, so I'm going to skip that. There's an app for LinkedIn also. You can get it on. Android, Windows Phone, Blackberry, iPads, iPhones. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll get it later, but I'll skip that for the moment. Now, LinkedIn has two aspects, the basic free ver version and the premium <coughs> version. The premium version. So the difference are that you get more features on the premium one uh, and plans starting at $25, but you'll be able to have more connections, save profiles, premium filters, save mess send messages to people that you're not connected to, and so forth. So we're going to be fine with the free one, but in the future, uh, the, the premium version might uh, be useful to you. I'll just choose the basic one. So since I just created my account, it's pretty empty and it's giving me a little bit of a tour. It says it's easier to edit your profile. Stay ready for new opportunities by keeping your profile up to date. So, okay. And then over here it mentions uh, there are, you, we can do sections. This is new. This is something new in, uh, in LinkedIn that wasn't there before. We can add sections. We'll look at that later. There's also your, your particular profile looks a certain way to you and to your connections and to people that don't know you. So you, we can change that to see how does this look like to random people that don't know me yet. There's a button over here that says about sharing to whenever I change anything on my profile do I want to share that with my connections. So you can turn that on or off. I'll leave it on. Here's my profile. So if you were creating an account right now, hopefully you managed to create one. I'll pause if anyone needs any help at this point, and then if, uh, if, you, if we don't, then we'll go on to start populating our profile a bit. So anyone need any help at this point? Okay, so... What we want to do is to start to fill in our profile. Um, there's a spot for a photo, and that should be a photo of yourself, not a cool photo of your logo or your company. It should be yourself, because, again, this is 
people, connecting with people professionally. So um, maybe that the classic duck face <laughs> selfie is not the best one to use. Maybe a little bit more professionally with a nice shirt or a nice background. Don't have your cluttered bathroom window behind you as you take that photo. Um, a cell phone will work, but I'm just saying, you know, have good lighting, a nice simple background, not cluttered, and not the one here, the selfie that you're doing like that. You want to have uh, a little bit more of a level photo and, and so forth. So um, I'm going to add a photo later. I don't have one handy, but you want to think about adding a professional photo. Now, if your business online, however, is very casual, if you're very, you know, if, if you've got a kind of a business like like a farmer or uh, a skateboarder or like, I don't know, like a very uh, casual kind of business, therefore, okay, it would make sense, sure, have a casual kind of photo. That's who your target audience is. So if you you know, if, if you are an extreme sports enthusiast and you're, you're in a suit and tie in your photo, that's a bit of a disconnect with your image, isn't it? Your, your profile. So I would say for most of you, you'd be having a more professional photo, but for some of you, it depends on your online presence, you can, uh, you can change that as you want. So basically, There are several things to fill out. So just that we're all on the same page wherever you're at. At the very top left we've got the main menus. We've got home, profile, connections, jobs, interests. Um, so the slightly confusing thing is that okay there are these menu items and drop down items but those top level items are also clickable and they take you to different sections so it might look, look like well if I hover over profile I can edit it and so forth but if you click profile that itself is a screen if you go to edit profile that's a slightly different screen just like connections here like who am I connected with I don't see anything listed here and that's the slightly confusing part if you click on connections that will show you your connections so I just want to go back here so that we're all looking at the same thing. Just click on Profile, Profile Menu. <clears throat> Depending on your... It's kind of random, but at the top here it's telling me perhaps... For me it's telling me what languages do you know. So it's asking me to fill in a skill or an ability or whatever. For yours it might tell you something else. If it doesn't pop up, that's okay. On another screen we can fill this stuff in. But I, mine popped up with a language, so I will fill that in um, if it pops up for you. So, what language do you know? It says English, and you can write how skilled you are with it. So I'll, I'll say, you know, advanced. Oh, I see. It's adding another language. Okay, so I could do Spanish. On another part, it you can check your uh, proficiencies. So I'll save that. Would you like to assess your English language skills and earn a certificate of proficiency? You can add the certificate to your profile. Take a free test from our partner, EF Education, first. It's, uh, so they're partnered over here. With various other providers, although I need to create an account, so I might do that later. But there I can... Um, that might be useful. I can get um, proficiency on the various <clears throat> languages that I have. Now it's asking me, do you have any work samples? So if I, if you get that pop-up, you can fill it in. But again, all of these pop-ups uh, appear there. If you don't see them, we can fill them out in other spots. So for example, there's sections. And mine is saying photo. Members with, with a photo get 11 times more profile views. So I don't have a photo yet, I'll add it later. There's education. I can view more. I can add education, summary, skills, language, volunteer. So if those pop-ups are not happening, you can get them from here. There's a bunch of sections. A lot of these are new, actually. Like, there's projects. So perhaps some of the important things to fill out. Education. 
So if you see that section, select Add School, and it gives it a new section here, Education, the name, and so forth. So you can put as much as you want here, and you can start with high school, but I wouldn't do anything lower than high school. Uh, really, uh, middle school and elementary is not relevant uh, at a certain level in your life. So it's high school and up. So I'm going to say here, uh, Mar Vista High School. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to mention every single thing here, but education, uh, that's important to fill in. I'm filling in some high school education, field of study. For high school, I guess I would put just general education. Grade, well, uh, diploma. Activities and societies, were you in a club, were you uh, on the honor roll? You know, what uh, credentials or what um, activities or awards and, and whatever did you get out of high school? So I could say, I don't remember anymore, I guess, but vice principals, honor roll, <coughs> description. Hmm. Well, we've got C examples. So under education. Education descriptions can provide some detail about your studies, so users viewing your profile can get a better sense of your background and experience. Some examples. DJ at student radio station and trumpet player in marching band. Three years of study of Mandarin Chinese. Student alumni representative class of 2001. Provost's award. Graduated with honors. Dissertation title effects of multifactoriality multi on Crone box alpha. That's not real. But uh, here you can fill in those uh, details that you got from, edu from your education. And now I've got a section of education. And I can add more. So in that section, if you hover over now, to if you made a mistake, you can always go back and hover over to edit, and then hover over to add more. Yeah, it's a section. Um, is it like the resumes where you try to condense everything to one page? Or? No. On this, I would say as much as I can about myself. The, re the, the resume is the part where you would condense it for the particular job. So various jobs that I've applied to, like at different colleges and so forth, uh, different departments, I would focus, I have like maybe 10 things that I could write in that resume, but I put you know four of them that are relevant to that job. But here it's fine to put everything. Can you notice when someone looks your profile? You do, actually. That, that does tell you that. All the other networks, they don't really give you that information about someone looked at your profile. LinkedIn does. It tells you who it was, their little picture and everything, so you will see who looked at your profile. So what's cool about the latest, some of the latest updates to LinkedIn is, okay, it used to be a very dry, a very resume kind of website, and now they've added a lot more multimedia. Because notice there on education for Mar Vista, it also says, well, add a document or a photo or a link or a video or a presentation. So if you were in the debate club in high school and there is a video of you in the debate club, you can add that video right there, and now you'll have some more to show for it than just the basic um, text. Can, can you change the order of the uh, education? Not the order of the education because it is chronological. It's going to show your oldest education last and then your newest education first. Okay. 
but you can change the order of these boxes. So oh, if you drag oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so if you, okay, yes. So on that you can the boxes you can put it up however you want. So you can hover over the box of education and then drag that to a different position. I'm going to add another education here. So some of these have a presence in LinkedIn. They have a profile, especially businesses and colleges and universities. So here I'm filling in the, my education from Southwestern College, and if I notice, there's a couple of Southwestern Colleges. Don't select the one in Kansas unless you did go to Southwestern College in Kansas. Uh, there is a Southwestern College here in San Diego. Technically, Southwestern Community College District. So I guess Kansas and Iowa also have a southwestern part of the state. So the benefit of selecting a school that is on LinkedIn is that then you will have access to look at other people that have that, have that education. So then you can try to connect with other people in that college or business, again, to get connections that are beneficial to you. And I would recommend uh, to avoid using um, abbreviations and contractions and so forth. Like uh, here, I'm saying, okay, I got an associate's degree. I wrote, I got an AA there. Um, this is the network where you do want to spell things out um, to be more professional. So I would write there, associate of arts degree instead of just saying uh, AA or, or whatever you know short name for things I would spell it out so I've added there a couple of education educational a couple of educational institutes For fun, I'm going to put a YouTube video on that one. So let's see, I'll select video and paste. So it should work to have a variety of multimedia there because then it's not as boring as just a plain old resume. And there it is. Okay, so I've got there a video. And it took the description over from took the description over from uh, YouTube. Now this is a little off topic, but I know you guys have, are some of you might be involved in Club Web. So that, yeah, so if you've got something related to Club Web, I, I would put it in there. So let me show off this right here. Back in the old days, I was involved in Club Web also. So let me show you this video where I got on the news because of Club Web. 
students at Southwestern College in Chula Vista spent some time playing video games today that they designed. It was part of Southwestern's first annual game design showcase put on by Club Web, the college's computer animation club. Students have been helping each other build their games with names like Political Safari and Swine Flu for the past eight weeks. Where students um, come in and they, uh, they learn from each other, they show off what they've done, and this is the first time we've done it and it seems to be a great success. Instructor Victor Campos says the class is proving to be very popular as the number of students doubled this semester to 27. Course will be offered again next semester. So there you go. I am famous. So that would be something to put here on my LinkedIn profile because it shows again um, from other sources, you know, you're going to be writing how great you are, of course, but if you can also get that from other sources, that legitimizes you more also in the eyes of prospective uh, employers and so forth. What, what's the link that... Uh, well... What's the link of the link here yeah, that, that links other people that when they are trying to find you, it's the... Uh, is the concept of your job that you put first there that, that you are doing now, like, for example, telecommunications, mm -hmm. like that people that are trying to find someone in telecommunications, just put telecommunications and find that, or how's, how's the way to be used to find them? You mean to find you or to find telecommunications, for example? The, the company to find me. Okay. In order to find people to work for them. Uh, I have had the experience where people have contacted me through Facebook, uh, through LinkedIn, that they were searching for a keyword like a job skill, and then in the area, someone said they were looking, they were looking for Photoshop uh, designers in in Ch in Chula Vista, okay. and because I have some of those skills. And some of those keywords that person found me and then I did a job for them of, of Photoshop so that's one of the points about filling all of this out and filling up as much of it as possible because people could do those searches and find find you all right so what we'll do is because a lot of this is uh, you know your particular skills let's take a, a little break uh, and then you fill in a few things that you see there and I'll come back and I'll and I'll show you a few more things it's pretty self-explanatory like I was saying but now you try we did a little bit of education here maybe go in here and see there's a spot for skills and so forth so maybe try one or two other sections take a break when we come back I'll show you a few more things on, on LinkedIn and then we'll go on if you need any help, call me over.